What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out Shotzi Furious over botches, Ronda Rousey demanded to lose, and Montez Ford, WWE champ, and other wrestling news, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel, man. We're just trying to run it up. We're so close to 90k. Uh, we will be hitting it sometime soon, and then after that, 100k on my personal page. That is the goal for this year. So we're gonna check this out by none other than WrestleMania. Make sure y'all subscribe to them if you haven't already. Let's do this thing. What is going on, guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Ronda Rousey demanded to drop the women's title, Montez Ford wants the WWE Championship, Alexa Bliss wanted to return as a much darker character, mm. Shotzi gets furious over a fan calling out her botches, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our wrestling channel, Incredible. Now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at Ronda Rousey demanded to drop the women's title. Our top story today looks at Ronda Rousey reportedly demanding to drop the SmackDown women's title to Liv Morgan. In shocking fashion, mm. Morgan cashed in the Money in the Bank briefcase on Rousey to win the SmackDown women's title during Saturday's premium live event. Nobody saw this coming, and according no. to Rousey's personal photographer, Rousey coming. insisted that Morgan would win the title. Lazy the Savage took to his Instagram story to state, respect to Ronda Rousey, who never wanted or asked to be champion, and mm. demanded that the most passionate pro wrestler be awarded the most prestigious title in our industry. If this is true, the major props should be directed towards Rousey. Mm. Morgan is indeed one of the most passionate talents on the WWE roster, and fans as well as other WWE superstars have come together to congratulate her. Morgan is rumored to be facing Rousey in a rematch at SummerSlam at the end of the month, and fans are certainly hoping that Morgan has an extensive run with the title. Next up, that is a interesting, um, I guess, interesting tidbit. I didn't know, uh, a lot of us didn't know that she requested to drop the title to Liv Morgan. That's that's pretty nice of her. That's actually pretty cool. I guess it makes sense even now with how she just pretty much like, you know, once Liv won, she gave her the title and, you know, held her hand up. So it makes sense why she did that. Um, I, I appreciate People that come into wrestling or whatnot and not trying to pull the politics and actually try to get other people over. And that's that's pretty cool. I can I can only show love and respect for anyone that does that. We know WWE management was very big and still is very big on Ronda Rousey. It's just sometimes they will end up pushing it or pushing her to the point where it's like, yeah, it's Ronda Rousey, but, you know, her, her like, I guess you could say her mystique, the excitement of having Ronda Rousey there has kind of worn off since she's come back. So I'm glad that Ronda was able to, you know, make some type of waves in the back. Like, yo, she needs the title. And hopefully, if they are supposed to have a rematch, maybe Liv can get the win there. That would be nice. I, it would not make sense for Ronda to be for her to get the title, just to drop the title just a few weeks later and get the title back. That that wouldn't even make sense if Ronda would do that. So hopefully, if they're giving the title to Liv, they at least give her a couple wins under her belt before we all know <laughs> when Charlotte comes back that that belt is going away. She's, she's losing that title. Or hell, if Bailey comes back, and ends up on SmackDown is wraps. That that title is going away. So we'll see what they do moving forward. Montez Ford wants to become WWE champion. There's been a ton of speculation recently concerning WWE breaking up the Street Profits. It was reported mm -hmm. yesterday that WWE are extremely high on Montez Ford and a singles push is potentially on the horizon. During a recent interview with Wrestling Inc., Ford revealed that if the Street Profits do indeed break up, he has major plans for his singles career and wants to become WWE Champion. That would be cool. Ford revealed, if the draft happens and they, you know, we're forced to go our separate ways, we're definitely going to keep that support there. Keep bringing it 100%. I know as a kid speaking for myself, I've always had dreams of being a WWE World Champion. That dream just never fades away, man. You know, when you're here, I feel like if you're not trying to be the guy or the team, then what are you here for? This is you know, true. Besides the money. Yeah. But still, at the same time, like, you want to create a legacy. 
Would you guys like to see Ford become a single star and receive a massive push into the main event scene and possibly even win the title? Let us know in the comments down below. You know what? I think a lot of us at some point in the back of our mind knew WWE will probably split them up. And WWE is definitely going to go most likely to push Montez Ford as a, uh, a singles guy. I don't know if they'll push him to be the WWE champion, but I can see him if whenever they do split up, I can see Montez Ford going for the Intercontinental Championship and winning that. And then slowly but surely building himself up potentially to take the WWE Championship. The dude is fantastic in the ring. He's pretty good on the microphone. He has a lot of energy. The fans love him. Dude, got he has everything he needs to be a WWE Champion. It just depends on how they book him. The only problem is they don't have enough tag teams in the division right now for them to even really split up. So this needs to be after they get some more tag teams in the division for that to happen because if they split up, we know where um, where uh, Montez Ford is going. Angelo Dawkins, though, what you do with him? Seriously. And I don't, I don't want him to get lost in the shuffle while one other person really catapults themselves. I mean, that's usually how it happens when great tag teams break up. One person catapults themselves. The other person is kind of struggling. So I don't know what they do with Angelo Dawkins. I hope he doesn't get lost in the shuffle if that do, does happen. But right now, they need to keep them together. And I'm still trying. Well, I'm still one of those people that is hoping that WWE listens and have the Street Profits versus the Usos one more time at SummerSlam in a TLC match, man. Let's get that move. Let's get that movement going. Next up, WWE struggling to sell tickets for uh, SummerSlam. Oh. SummerSlam is just a few weeks away, and it looks like the WWE still has a long way to go before the show even sells out. According to WrestleTix Patreon page, WWE Damn. still has over 11,000 tickets left to sell for the big event. As things stand, SummerSlam is set to be main evented by Roman Reigns defending his Universal Championship against Brock Lesnar in a last man standing match. Though there's certainly a lack of interest from fans on social media and it looks like this lack of interest has carried over into poor they ticket have. sales. There are rumors that John Cena was going to wrestle Theory at the event, but it looks like Cena isn't going to be involved, so uh -huh. WWE are relying on yet another Reigns vs Lesnar match to sell tickets. Next up, when did- That's not good. We've seen, we've seen the decline in tickets. With Money in the Bank. Now we're seeing it with SummerSlam. 11,000 tickets they need. And SummerSlam is like a few weeks away. That's a lot of tickets to try to sell. This is this is the problem where WWE, they need to continue to push the stars they have. You have Austin Theory. You have Matt Riddle. You have some of these other guys. If they would have been pushing some of these guys prior to what we got with the whole Roman Reigns situation, or hell, pushing some of the guys that they let go, maybe we'd be in a different situation. Who knows? But now they they have they have to rely on Brock. They have to rely on the Goldbergs and the John Cena's because they don't have nobody else outside of Roman. That's like a huge draw. So we'll see if they're able to. Uh, Sell some more tickets. See what they do leading up to SummerSlam. I know a good way to sell some tickets is to make that tag team championship match a TLC match. I think a lot of us would be interested. The WWE decide to give Theory the Money in the Bank briefcase. A theory shocked the world this past Saturday at Money in the Bank as after losing his US title to Bobby Lashley earlier in the show, Theory was added to the men's Money in the Bank ladder match and he ended up winning the briefcase. This decision has received criticism from fans as fans were hoping to see either Seth Rollins or Sami Zayn winning the match. A a theory has a lot of work to do before he wins over much win of the WWE well. audience, but WWE are insistent on making Theory the next big star in the company. Many fans believe that Theory winning Money in the Bank was a last minute decision, but surprisingly, this doesn't appear to be the case. According to Ringside News, Theory was always planned to win the briefcase at the mm. premium event. The question now is when Theory is going to cash in. There are rumors that WWE is going to market the possibility of Theory cashing in during Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar's match at SummerSlam, but WWE may wish to wait a while before pulling the trigger on a Theory world title victory. What are your thoughts on Theory winning the Money in the Bank? Would you guys like to see him as champion? Let us know in the comments down below. And apparently on apparent purely apparently on Monday Night Raw, he did say that um 
one, he's supposed to be having a rematch with uh, Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship, and then he was gonna he planned on cashing in uh, his money in bank on Brock or Roman, whoever's left standing. So he's put it out there. We'll see if it's successful or not. Y'all know my thoughts on Austin Theory winning. I don't have a problem with him winning it. I just think this is a quick push, a very quick push. So I don't know if this is going to pan out like they think it will. Because I know they want him to be the next big guy. But they're kind of pushing him a little bit too fast in this situation. I think he still should have the United States Championship and really build that up. Build himself up through that. Before we got to this point, I would have been fine if Austin Theory won Money in the Bank next year. It was actually announced in the match, was in the match, actually did some things in the match. I would have been okay if he won next year. This year, I'm not so sure. But hey, we will see how things plan out. Next up, Nia Jax calls out an indie promotion. Uh oh. Former WWE superstar Nia Jax took to Twitter to call out the startup wrestling promotion Wrestling Entertainment Series. The promotion, which is run by former WWE tag team AOP, is due to have their first major show take place in Nottingham, England this month. The promotion continues to promote Jax in marketing material, despite Jax not even being involved in the show. Oh, damn. In the tweet, Jax would state, I don't know why I'm still on the poster, but I will repeat myself again. I will not be at the show. Please do not buy a ticket thinking you will see me perform or get a chance to meet me. I hate that this misleads people. Damn. The promotion hasn't got off to the best of starts as numerous wrestlers including Chelsea Green and Lana have dropped out and they've been Damn. promoting that Jax will wrestle a mystery opponent on the show even though she's confirmed that she won't even be there. During the weekend, former WWE star Aiden English took to social media to reveal he won't be attending the show as the promotion haven't even paid him nor they have arranged any Damn. travel or accommodation for him. Next up, Alexa Bliss wanted. Hey, that's not sounding too good at all, man. Y'all gotta pay your talent. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta do better with that. Like that's, it's not sounding good at all. To return with a much darker character, Alexa Bliss oh, would undergo Lord. a slight character change following the Extreme Rules pay per view last year. Bliss would end up going to therapy in a number of segments with the idea that Bliss would return to television with an altered persona. But since Bliss's return, Lily the doll has been present, but the majority of the sinister and supernatural S elements of Bliss's character have been cut back. In all likelihood, the only reason that Lily remains a key part of Bliss's character is that the doll sells extremely well on www.shop.com. Wow. According to that Bliss makes during sense. an interview on the Out of Character podcast, when she returned to television a few months ago, she wanted to debut a much darker persona than the character she was before. Bliss revealed, I did, I wanted to go even darker and deeper. I had Jason Baker come out with a sketch and prototype of a different version of Lily, which would have been super cool. Obviously, with creative, things always change. I'm still holding on that this new version of Lily will come out one day. It's unknown what the creative plans for Bliss currently are, as there were rumors that she may join forces with Liv Morgan, and the two may go after the vacated tank titles. However, with Morgan recently Lead winning the SmackDown long. Women's title and them tag be on SmackDown long. moving forward, they may decide to pair Bliss with someone else. That is if the planned tag team tournament is actually still taking place. Let that, Would you have preferred let it go. to have Bliss return with a new character? Let us know in the comments down below. Next, I just want Bliss to just be like a normal wrestler. Like the whole superpower gimmick that wasn't even originally hers, I just still find it cringe. Because it really led to absolutely nowhere. Literally, the fiend had the power, put her in a trance, gave her some powers. Then she became more powerful than the fiend. Ah, nah, just leave it out. Just, just let it go. That's my personal opinion. Let that, let it go. Just no. Give her, you know, give her, you know, a different type of gimmick. If it worked, maybe. But I just. You can have a dark character without the whole superpower mess. That's the only thing that kind of ruins it for me because it's just like, uh, it's kind of hard for me to take take what she got going on serious. You know what I'm saying? So hey, we'll see, you know, if they do change it up. But it makes sense why they still have the Lily doll because I guess people are buying it on WWE Except Shop. details of Stephanie McMahon's talent meeting. And the new interim WWE chairwoman Stephanie McMahon held a meeting to inform Superstar that her door is always open and according to Fightful Select, the meeting was well received. Okay. Stephanie is universally beloved by WWE superstars as well as other WWE employees. And it looks like her open door policy is how she naturally operates in a day to day role in WWE. Stephanie looks to be doing all the right things in her role as interim chairwoman and we'll be interested to see how her role develops as the accusations directed towards Vince McMahon continue to be investigated. And finally, 
And that's that's nice. As long as she's able to, you know, have that that open communication with the talent, I think that's always dope. But once again, it doesn't really matter in a grand scheme of things, in my opinion, because Vince still is the head of all creative decisions. So it doesn't matter what she say. Creatively, Vince is still in charge. He's going to book how he wants to book. Doesn't really matter. So that's the only downside. But maybe Stephanie could pull some weight, pull some strings. If she sees something that Vince may be overlooking, who knows? But it's cool she has that open communication with the wrestlers. But as long as Vince is head of <laughs> head of creative, it does not matter. Finally, Shotzi responds to Money in the Bank backlash. Oh, boy. During the Money in the Bank event on Saturday, SmackDown star Shotzi received a ton of criticism from yes, fans. she did. She bought several spots in the match, and fans would even claim that she was dangerous and a liability. These comments clearly got to Shotzi, and as of today, she took to Twitter to address the critics. In an extended statement, Shotzi would declare that everyone had fun and nobody got hurt. Mm -hmm. She added that a ladder match is unpredictable and mistakes can happen at this any time. This is very time. true. The star even added that she has fans on Twitter telling her that she should be fired and how friends of hers had to wipe the tears away. Now, yeah, there's certainly that's... a fine line between fair criticism and outright telling someone they should be released from the company. Yeah. Several fans were quick to reply with support to her statement and even Tyson Kidd, who produced a women's Money in the Bank ladder match, replied by telling Shotzi that she was amazing. But they have it folks. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. I'm all for fair criticism because she did look kind of kind of a little off in the range. There was a, a few botches from her. But I'm not going to be the type to be like, oh, you deserve to be fired. You deserve to lose your job. Because once again, for the most part, she's a safe worker. I don't really hear too much about her injuring people. And money in the bank ladder matches, they are very unpredictable and things happen. So these are not just standard matches. They don't. That's why they don't really have like ladder matches like that from the jump because it's kind of it's kind of hard to predict how certain things will play out. So I am not one of those people that are for other people saying, "Oh, you're trash. You deserve to be fired." I'm all for fair criticism. Like, hey, you need to work on some things. But I'm not gonna sit up here and be like, "Yeah, I hope you get fired." And all the mean, extra mean comments some people were probably saying to her, man. Because at the end of the day, this is a person. This is a person who has feelings. Y'all may just see a character, but behind that character is a real person, a real human being that feels pain, emotion, and all the other stuff. So it's like you got, you know, some people just be taking it too far when they're on social media. Like, just chill out. You can say you're two piece, but when you start getting rude and disrespectful and mean, like you're not helping the situation. Now you're just being an asshole. So, but yeah, this was a cool little video, man. A lot of informative things that I did not know was going on behind the scenes. Um, my real question to you guys is how do you guys think SummerSlam is going to end this year? Do you think we're going to get a cash in like Austin Theory says we are? Or do you think Austin Theory is going to hold on to the briefcase just for a little bit longer? And SummerSlam will end with most likely Roman winning and everyone just being like, all right, can this feud be over? Let me know how y'all think SummerSlam is going to end this year. Because they, they, they got to do something to really hype up this show. Obviously, the potential cash in may pique some other people's interest but i think a lot of people are just tired of seeing brock versus roman one more time so we'll see what they do leading up to some sam so they can try to sell some more tickets but i appreciate all the love and support row 2 90k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace